is brought to you by The Heartbreakers by Ali Novak. And The Heartbreakers is about a girl named Stella whose sister Kara has been diagnosed with leukemia. For Kara's birthday, she decides to stand in line for four hours to get an autographed CD of Kara's favorite band. The Heartbreakers also happen to be Stella's least favorite band, and while she's in line at Starbucks waiting to get a coffee, she meets a really cute boy and spends time talking to him about how much she hates this band. Cute boy is the lead singer. Of course. He gives her his number anyway, and the two of them start to pursue a relationship, and Stella has to decide if she's going to resent him for taking her attention away from her sister when she's possibly dying, or if she's going to let him encourage her to live her own life. So that's The Heartbreakers by Ali Novak, coming August 4th, wherever books are sold. Hey guys, Amanda Nelson here, I'm the managing editor of Book Riot, and I'm here with this week's In the Mailbag. This is a weekly look at some of the coolest stuff we've gotten in the Book Riot mailbag here at uh, BR headquarters, uh, so let's get started. Up first is Slate House from David Mitchell. David Mitchell already has a new book coming out. It seems like his last one, um, The Bone Clocks, just came out last year, I think, or maybe it was two years ago. Anyway, it just feels very recent, and this new book comes out in November, and it's a David Mitchell take on the haunted house story. It spans five decades from the 70s to the present, takes place in Britain, of course, and it's about a house where weird things happen, basically. <laughs> and like most David Mitchell, it jumps back and forth across different genres and has its own healthy dose of weird. So look out for that coming in November, Slade House by David Mitchell. Up next is The Gun by Funimori Nakamura from Soho Crime. This comes out in January, but I wanted to talk about it because it just sounds really neat. It's a Japanese crime noir fiction uh, story. It's about a university student who on a walk one night stumbles across a dead body with a gun lying next to it on the ground. He picks up the gun for his own reasons and takes it with him um, and then his world starts to kind of fall apart. He finds out that the gun has four bullets left in it and in true, you know, Chekhovian fa fashion decides that he's got to fire it. Knowing that he's got a gun on his body brings his life a weird kind of purpose, which might sound sort of strange to a Western audience, or well, which might sound sort of strange to an American audience where it's pretty easy to get your hands on a gun, but of course in Japan getting your hands on a handgun is infinitely more difficult. So for a university student to find one just lying on the ground and then t to take it would really um, kind of shatter his world. And that's what happens in this book. So if you're into crime fiction, Japanese crime fiction is super dark and strange and weird and I really like it. So I'm looking forward to this. It comes out in January from Soho Crime. Up next is a new book from Isabel Allende called The Japanese Lover. This comes out November 3rd from Atria Books. Um, Isabella Allende, of course, wrote The House of the Spirits and several other books. She's a beloved author, and her newest work is about the, um, the horrors of World War II. So the book is about a Polish girl who moves to San Francisco uh, fleeing the Nazis, and a boy who lives in San Francisco, a Japanese-American boy, who she falls in love with, who is sent away to an internment camp. They can never be together. Their love is completely forbidden for various reasons having to do with race and family and prejudice and a lot of things. Um, but their devotion to each other lasts for over 70 years. So, sounds like a heartbreaker. Stay on the lookout for it. The Japanese Lover by Isabella Allende, November 3rd. Up next, I'm really excited about this. It's The Story of My Teeth by Valeria Luiselli. I got this in the mail because I am one of the judges for the 2016 Best Translated Book Award. Um, which is run by 3% um, out of the University of Rochester, and this uh, book is one of the books that is being considered. There are over 300, 300 plus um, books that are eligible for the award this year, and I'm going to read quite a few of them, but this one I'm really, really looking forward to. I've heard great things about Valeria Luiselli. She's been named one of the 20 best Mexican writers under 40, and she's gotten the National Book Foundation's 5 under 35 award. This is not her first novel, but it will be the first novel of hers that I will read, that I will have read. And there's so much critical acclaim and fan acclaim about this author that I really look forward to it. So this new book is about a man who wants to replace all of his teeth. To fund his uh, project to replace all of his teeth, which are particularly unsightly, he plans to use me his many talents, which includes being able to impersonate James Joplin, being able to stand an egg up on its end, and oddly being the world's best auction caller. 
So it sounds really quirky and strange and weird, which I always go for. So be on the lookout for uh, The Story of My Teeth by Valeria Lubiselli. Okay, finally, I just got this in the mail and it's so intriguing. I did not know this was happening, but this is a new edition of Neil Gaiman's Neverwhere. This is his first novel, but this new edition is the author's preferred text. And this is already on sale. It came out July 28th, so you can go ahead and pick this up if you're interested in it. So Neverwhere, Gaiman's first novel, came out in 1997, and since then, several different versions have come out in the US and the UK, all of which are a little bit different from the previous ones. Um, this version reconciles all of those together and includes some scenes that were cut from the first few editions that Neil Gaiman himself really enjoyed. So. This is Neil Gaiman's preferred version of his first novel. Neil Gaiman Completus, this buds for you. So that's the author's preferred text of Neverwhere. And if you're looking to um, get this specific version of the novel and not just any old copy of the novel, it does say author's preferred text here on the bottom. And the link below will go directly to this edition. So that's it for this week's In the Mailbag, five books that I am really excited about that came in our mail this week. Uh, let me know what rad stuff you picked up this week in your reading life, and if you've read any of these books already, please let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts before I dive into them, and I will talk to you guys later.